Today, we're going to take an opportunity to compare results from one pool to another. This is a topic that occasionally comes up within the community. However, I personally have never spent the time comparing results while using the exact same model of GPU and operating them at the exact same time. I thought to evaluate this and, in turn, share my experience. For this evaluation, I am going to put back online two Sapphire RX 6700 XT GPUs. Each card is operating on its own rig and will be pointed to their own respected pool. This video is not to advocate for one pool over another, but to scratch the itch that is curiosity. Let's remember this comparison could also be done 10 different times with no two results being the same. We'll first start with Elephium as it's mined on Hero Miners and Viper.net. For evaluation, I have allowed the cards to mine for three days. Let's review the results. Results will vary for each of us, and admittedly, the production from one single GPU is relatively small. We also have to take pause and note that luck is a contributing factor. How often is the pool hitting a block? Is it below or under the average amount of effort? Hero Miners has historically managed the most hash power to the Olympium project. However, in this three-day window, Viper.net delivered approximately 9% more yield. Now, I want to evolve the conversation. If you mine long enough, you'll eventually stumble upon the topic of Unminable, a pool that allows users to mine a specific algorithm but be compensated for the efforts in a variety of different coins. In essence, they are serving as an exchange. In one case, this can be greatly convenient, especially if you want to grow holdings of a non-mineable coin, such as Cardano. Some suggest not to bother. Where applicable, just mine the coin, or just buy it. But where's the fun in that? So let's first do a comparison where both cards mine a lithium, one is pointed to hero miners, the other is to unminable, and I'm choosing to be paid in a lithium. Let's review the results. Again, the duration of time is three days. This time, we see the margin between the two pools is now smaller. This demonstrates that no three days are going to be exactly the same. Now, in my opinion, there's a bit of a mystery in how Unminable performs their exchanges. So let's take a deeper dive into mining a lithium, but being paid out in the OXA. In this comparison, we'll mine for three additional days. And here I will use Viper.net to mine a lithium directly. But we'll then sell the earnings and use the proceeds to directly buy the OXA. The second card, again, will mine to Unminable, but do an auto exchange to Neoxa. Let's see the results. Let's crunch some numbers to how this translates to fiat at the time the three day period concluded. For this experience, mining directly to the Alifium wallet, then selling it to in turn purchase Neoxa directly would have harvested a higher yield. We see this here. While this experience suggests that it's best to mine directly and overlook what Unminable has to offer, is it that simple? For the miner who was hodling their earnings, I suppose the answer is yes. However, what if your strategy is to take revenue or diversify your portfolio more often? Let's not forget, every time we transfer from one wallet to the exchange or off of the exchange, we are often hit with a fee. And depending on the project, those fees can add up. And let's not overlook that every one of those transactions creates a taxable event. And I think this is where Unminable demonstrates its value, simply by reducing some of the work for us. I know this topic is not new, but if you found the video of some interest, I'd appreciate a hit on the like button. To grow the channel, consider subscribing. And as always, be mindful of your uptime, and thanks for watching.